just as car payments keep you guys poor, so does moving up in houses. So what we mean by this is people are always giving themselves a reason to get a bigger house, a nicer house, more bedrooms, more space, more square feet, whatever. And I figured we could talk on this topic because we have all, we always have family visiting from other states or countries or whatever, and we stick with the same house. And I'm trying to see how long I can hold on, you know, but with uh, with all these, you know, policies of <laughs> immigrants moving into my house, we'll see. We'll see if my if my uh, family overseas, my in-laws and sister-in-law and all y'all are watching just know. You're going to squeeze me into, <laughs> you know, into into having no space. But um, I thought, yeah, I thought we could talk on this one because I know <laughs> Kirby knows what I'm talking about, man. I, shoot, man, I'm, I'm looking at it. so many people coming in, man. They're going to oh, God. Gonna be with them, man. They're he got gonna... He got he got the new Underground Railroad, y'all. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's that's something I I do see, and we touched on it on the last video where people people upgrade their house not based on need; they base it on it based on status symbol. I mean, I've seen it throughout my life and career, especially military. You move up in rank, you get a bigger house because you have to get the houses that the people that's in your rank structure or in your or your promotional scale are living in. But the thing you don't realize, and I don't know why it don't come to people's mind, is the people you're trying to be like are broke. Um, I've seen, you know, people move up from, you know, entry level employees to um, management to higher up in uh, corporations. And they adjusted their lifestyle to that position, not taking the fact of, you know, if I have a family and my goal is to make sure my family is taken care of financially, moving up and housing and things of that nature, it lowers the probability. It makes me more dependent on the job and then it makes me more susceptible if something bad economically happened and they have to, you know, cut or move or or lay off employees. It makes my situation worse. So I I take the reverse thinking of I buy a house. I mean, actually, the house I live in, I buy a house and then the more money I make, I still stay in the house. Alex, you're a better man than me. You know, you got the you got uh days in over there you got everybody at your house <laughs> but, but for me nobody nobody's coming and if they come in they they're gonna pack themselves in it's gonna be tight because i ain't going to buy i put a tent in the backyard that's probably the most i give you i i put a tent in the backyard but that's that's it i'm not i'd rather have that gap of okay i make a promotion i make more money i make more money so i'm so far away from if I lose this job and I can still, I still have the ability to make this cheaper mortgage payment than if I move up in house. So just think for every, for every hundred, hundred thousand dollars that I bring in, that I've grown my net worth or I've grown my income and I moved up in houses. So I should be over there in South Tampa somewhere. And then, you know, right now, you know, I'm dealing with, you know, a couple of tenants that I had to, you know, send a packing then it will make it harder for me to maintain that house in South Tampa if I went through a whole economic cycle. And let's say it's a mass layoff and I got a whole bunch of tenants not paying or businesses failing because of the economic cycle. It'll make it way harder. But I just choose to stay in the same house. And then if 50 percent of my tenants you know, leave or whatever, I'm still in the same house. I don't have that struggle, that worry. If businesses collapse, I still don't have that worry. I'm not saying I'm in the projects, but I'm still in the same house that I bought 10 years ago and I have no plans on moving. I can't even kick my son out. He said, no, but I ain't moving either. So <laughs> that's that's what it is. It's, we understand the value of having more than enough. 
having more than enough will put you in situations that make it better for your better for your situation. I mean, better for any situation that come arise. Just like the background on uh on Alex Green there. The United States and the rest of the world, the economy don't go straight up all the time. We've had recessions in the 80s. We've had recessions in the 90s. We had the financial crisis in 2007. We had the COVID crisis. What? Eventually, all this stuff got to break. Well, and it will break. When it happens, I'm not for sure, but it's signs of inklings out there already. We got interest rates up there at 8%. I saw, actually, I saw a lender give somebody a quote for owner op, 10%. 10% mortgage rate. So what are we doing? It's better to stay fast, stay fast and be where you're at than keep trying to adjust to meet up with the Joneses. But go ahead. Yeah. This one, especially because people always seem to need or uh, seem to believe that they need all kinds of space. They could have just them and their spouse and one kid and they think they need a four bedroom house. And I mean, right. okay, well, not no shots at you, Kirby. I'm just I wasn't even thinking of that. But <laughs> but <laughs> right, keep going. No, no, you're, you're right. You're 100 percent right. Go ahead. But, Go ahead. No. Uh, I'm I'm talking especially in like this market. I mean, and it, it's different if like. And that's why I wanted to talk on this because frequently your wife's family, they're always visiting and you guys yeah. have the space, but it's enough space just for that, for you guys, the family. And then whenever you have visitors and it's the same with us, you know, we have now I have my in-laws with us and I'm trying to, you know, hold the gate closed from Venezuela, but we'll see if, uh, if they <laughs> keep pouring in, <laughs> but, but, um, well, I mean, we still, I mean, we'll, we'll make it happen. I mean, we still have like an extra bedroom and then, I mean, there's still like the garage you can remodel. There's ways to make things work instead of just forcing yourself to upgrade, which could cost you an additional thousand to fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars a month. I mean, that's a huge financial decision that most Americans can't even afford. So it's a huge thing to take into consideration. You know, the more space you add, the it's not going to be a cheap fix it's you're going to add a lot of uh, monthly expense to your life and I mean truthfully and that that was a thought for me too is thinking like if we did come to that point how much would this cost and just running the numbers I was like I mean that's not something I, I want to do I mean so you just have to find a way to uh, make it affordable and if you if you live in a especially if you live in a good area I mean there's where I'm talking about you're not living in a war zone, then there's, I mean, the house you live in is sustainable. You can stay there. Then there's no reason to go out and upgrade, even if you have the 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 income to do so. And what what we mean by that is like like you talked about, Kirby. You have your assets, but you're not living out there in South Tampa where there's five, ten million dollar mansions. Because Especially if something did happen, then you're worried about paying for this this mortgage on this multi million dollar mansion. It's different right. if someone has hundreds of millions and billions because you're doing a net worth comparison. You know they have the astronomical income to afford that. But then comparing it in net worth comparisons, a five million dollar house to a multi hundred nine figure millionaire is nothing. It's I mean so. It's the same. It's yeah. it's the equivalent as well to you know us being in a three four hundred thousand dollar house, being a millionaire or whatever. But people yeah. seem to think that just because they they reach six figures that now they got to upgrade to a half a million dollar house or more, and there's just there's no sense in that at all. It's just gonna keep you. It's gonna keep you stuck in the rat race, and you know we can't stress enough pay off, you know, get rid of the monthly expenses and just live live comfortably, really. I mean, that's it's not living uncomfortable. So and and that's why that's why I wanted you to keep going with it, because you're hundred percent right. Did I did I need a four bedroom house? No. The I'm gonna tell you what the problem is. The only reason why I have a four bedroom house is because all the two bedrooms was already taken. <laughs> that's that's what it was. I already had a threshold that I knew I wasn't right. going over to pay for a house. I knew it. 
it and, and and of course you knew I was out of the country when I uh bought the house and then so I told the realtor my threshold and they kept trying to show houses that was over my threshold that I was willing to spend especially in the economic cycle this was 2000 2012 in Florida 2012 yeah 2012 in Florida and Florida just got hit the worst during the uh, financial crisis so I knew I wasn't paying over that so the first thing I looked for was only thing I needed I didn't even my wife was pregnant at the time so I was, two bedrooms was good but all of them was taken because you know I wasn't here to scoop up scoop them up at the super cheap prices and then three bedrooms I looked at those and I knew what area I wanted to be in I looked at those it wasn't it was either brand new that was over my threshold and then so it just didn't happen and then I just happened to find this for sale by owner and it was under my threshold in the area that I wanted to be in and it just happened to be poor too and I mean even now let's say we had four more kids let's just say we have four more kids I will put bunk beds in every damn room before I say oh I need a bigger house Right. I'm just being honest. I'll put bunk beds in every room before I be like, "Oh, I need, I need more room. I need more room." And that's I will find every possible way to keep the same, the same cost outgo. Because I mean, as you know, for me, a house that you buy to live in is a liability. No matter if it's paid off, it's a liability because the money just keeps flowing out. So I'm not going to go buy a bigger liability or more liability. What for what? The only thing you need in the house is somewhere to eat. Not somewhere to eat. You just need a kitchen. You can stand up and eat for all I care. But <laughs> you need a kitchen, you need a bathroom, and you need somewhere to lay your head. That's it. No matter how big or how small, that's where you're going to spend most of the time at anyway. So I wouldn't buy a five-bedroom house and it's only me, me and my family of three people. I wouldn't buy a five, six-bedroom house. Just build, let's build it from the ground up to make, you know, let everybody say ooh and ah about it. Because I know most of the bedrooms won't be used unless Alex, you start sitting your family members to come come over here and live with me. But it won't be used. So I'm paying for square footage that's not even being used. So why why would I bring on that liability? But people believe they want to have the showstopper house. They want when people come over to visit, they want to say ooh and ah. I don't want to say ooh and ah. I want them to say oh let me hurry up and leave. But I don't want them here anyway. So uh, that's that's just really that's just really my mindset on it. But people go that extra mile to do that and they put themselves in a financial bind and then they never stop to think about, hey, if you just stayed where you was at, you would have been all right. So let me say, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, share this video and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one.